Hope this is a pleasure to be here, in particular because I gave the talk with the same title three years ago in, in Freiburg. And actually, um, the nice thing about it, three years ago, it was just an idea which we presented. And now, finally, we can uh, show you the full experiment. Unfortunately, not yet with results, just some first event displays. So let's start what is Phaser and what's the idea of Phaser. Well, the basic idea is go to, you go to the LHC and we have proton proton collisions. And clearly, when you have proton proton collisions, most of the very uh, light stuff just flies in the direction of the protons further, right? So the thing is, with the Atlas experiment, which we have at the LHC, we are mainly looking for particles which are produced in these proton proton collisions, which have rather large transverse momentum, so are heavy. But clearly, when we're looking for, for axon-like particles or dark photons, they will be extremely light, and that means they will be produced in the forward direction. So what you see here is now um, uh, a view on the LHC tunnel, and here's the Atlas experiment. And now just assume we have lots of particles which are light produced in this direction, and this can be obviously new particles like dark photons or axon-like particles, but also neutrinos. All other light, charged light particles actually will be deflected by the LHC magnet. So everything which is neutral is actually just keeps on traveling. And since it's hopefully weakly reacting, such as neutrinos, it actually goes through the rock and then hits at some point the phaser experiment, which is installed in a side tunnel of the LHC. That's the basic idea. And um, the, the nice thing about this is that we have extremely large cross-sections here. Yeah, so the idea is now we look for light particles which actually decay in the phaser experiment. And as you see already here, the phaser experiment has two parts, phaser new, which is a neutrino experiment, as well as phaser. I, key, I will talk a little bit about phaser new because we have already first results there, even so it's not really the, uh, the topic of this conference. So the physics reach, let's go for three cases, let's start with the dark photons or dark, dark Higgs bosons. They would mainly come from uh, the case of light mesons, pions, etc from dark, uh, dark gamma or hard scattering events. And we assume they can decay into electrons, into muons, and pions. So um, how does this then look like? So we have here atlas and we have 480 meters of nothingness. And then we first come for a scintillator and, and a decay magnet. So in the decay volume is magnetic field. And then while well, we have this A prime decaying, for example, the plus and minus, we have stacking stations here in the LA colorometer. That's essentially the, the, the full idea. One background already to say is, um, for example, muons, which could also come here, but muons we can directly veto by, by these scintillators here and here. So we would see that they are muons because they interact at the very beginning. So the, the reach what we have here is, um, which you can actually see in, 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 uh, in uh, here for, for two models. So the phaser reach is shown in this line here, or um, this line over here. So it's actually rather complementary to other experiments um, which, uh, which are out there. So you also see SHIP and phaser 2, which might be the successor of the phaser experiment. Let's go to the part which is, um, for me, much more interesting, which is axial-like particles. Why I uh, explain in a second, but I think they're even more interesting. So there we would look for the case of ALPS into two photons. Nice thing here is obviously, or the problem here is, that these um, uh, two photons, when they decay, will not be separated in magnetic volume. So we have to have a certain opening angle, which we then reconstruct as a colorimeter signal. So, um, in principle, when we see nothing, 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 etc., then here at the deposit, there actually would be already a clear sign of something new. But there might be some background that actually which might fake this. Be very sure that this is an axiom you might uh, want to be able to separate these two photons. And I come to that point at the very, um, uh, at the very end. Now, why I think that these uh, particles, although the axions here are ex uh, ex uh, extremely um, interesting, if you look here at the exclusion plot, you see here phaser. In particular, this, um, this, this line here, which is the, the new uh, phaser limit which we will get after the uh, uh, run 3 of the LHC. And interestingly, in this region here, what I, what, what, what I show here, there actually you have models which could explain the G minus 2 of the muon. That's actually my uh, I think that's rather interesting to have a look uh, in this region. Okay, so uh, last but not least, the neutrinos. So obviously, also, lots of neutrinos will be produced in the proton-proton collisions that will just directly hit, uh, fly to our uh, phaser new detector. And the phaser new detector actually is uh, essentially just a block of tungsten interleaved with um, uh, emulsion films. I come to that in a second. The basic signatures which we would have there is electron neutrinos, muon neutrinos, and tau neutrinos. The electron neutrinos would just give the electron and then Bremsstrahlung plus the uh, recoil of the nucleus. 
the mule would be a straight line, plus the nuclear nucleus, and the tau might be then a straight line, and the decay of the tau, and also the recoil of the nucleus. And what we can actually measure there is essentially production cross-sections, yeah? In an energy range which has been never measured before. That's why we think it's rather interesting uh, to do this. So let's, let's have a look at the detector, at the design, and something similar I showed already three years ago, and some plots, you will, uh, some uh, um, um, slides, you will actually see how this looks now in reality. So this is the, the point where we will be uh, point to Atlas. So Atlas would be in this picture now here. And we have here the uh, trace and detector. We have um, here a veto scintillator, here a veto scintillator. Then we have uh, uh, magnets with a decay volume. Actually, so far nothing is. Then we have tracking spectrometers. Then again, a, a trigger and three shower scintillator system. And the very end, we have a colorometer system. And as I said three years ago, this was just the idea. And then I discussed a little bit how we would do this. And now finally everything is in place after three years only. That's why I'm so happy to talk about this because it was the smoothest experiment we have ever been on. Yeah? That in three years planning, you actually managed to get this done in three years. That's not only because we have an amazing team, but also because lots of the things which we use have been already pre-made. Yeah? So it was lying around and in the end just put, put together. Let's start with the uh, tracking system, which is shown here, here, and here. There actually we used um, we made, uh, uh, leftovers of the Atlas SCT, uh, SCT modules, which in the end are 96 uh, modules, which we used with a very good resolution of uh, 17 uh, microns over roughly 600 microns. It's very good to, to be able to separate two, two tracks, which you saw in the dark photon case, which you would, uh, would see there, if it goes to, for example, two electrons or two muons. And four of those uh, stations have been commissioned and installed, and in fact, more than 99.9% .9 of the strips which we have there are still active. And um, I'll show you some test beam results later on where we confirm all this. And actually everything which Atlas already did, the Atlas collaboration already did here for the, uh, for the um, description of these modules, obviously we could reuse. So this was rather easy. The same thing actually is true for the, uh, for the color meter system. Which I start first. This is actually our old modules which you see here. It's rather, it's rather small. And it's only 12 by 12 centimeters, one of these modules. And maybe they, they, we could use um, stuff of the NHCB collaboration. Nice thing here, also already completely known from the NHCB experts. So we could just reuse this. And they actually have a time, uh, 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 energy resolution of roughly 1%. So really extremely good. So the scintillator is actually there. We have to develop ourselves. And in fact, we have three, uh, four, sorry, four different um, um, uh, versions of those. And the good thing here is about scintillators, it's not so super tricky uh, to build new scintillators, right? I mean, this is something which you can do as a master student if you have time, yeah? So this is actually our own developments, and um, there we, well, it, was, it was rather straightforward. And the only very po a, a crucial point is the um, magnet, actually. The magnet system was completely new designed. However, at CERN, there are many, many experts on magnets, so actually CERN provided the magnet for us. And then in the end, it was just putting things together. Ah, yeah, sorry, the trigger and the duct. Um, in fact, also there we could use, we use mainly general purpose I.O. boards, both for the tracker um, as well as for the, for the trigger system. For the scintillators and colorometers, we could, we could use, we could use or we use mainly the KN boards design. So although this is rather um, straightforward. In the end, we have um, um, our expected trigger rate of roughly 500 hertz, which mainly comes from muons which enter our system. Actually, the muons are rather interesting because actually we can use them to calibrate our complete system um, because we have other tracking this there as well as a colorometer and we can just use them for calibration issues. Okay, let's, uh, one slide about the phaser new um, um, experiment. The phaser new as said is directly built in front of the, um, of the, of the phaser uh, system and actually it's just a block of tungsten interleaved with emulsion films. So what is this? Well, in my use, we still had normal photo cameras, right? With normal photo films. And in principle, that is actually it. Yeah? So we have just photo films, which are interleaved there every, every millimeter. And nice thing about these emulsion films is that they extremely, uh, have an extremely good spatial resolution and angular resolution. Because in fact, you do not only get a hit if something goes through the emulsion films, but you get a 3D information. So you can actually read out an, a complete tracklet from one emulsion film. And this actually enables you to have extremely precise tracking. And the nice thing about this is then actually that even so you don't have any timing information, the resolution, the spatial resolution is so good that at the end you can reconstruct all the individual tracks there. So actually what you see here is um, 
the result of a pilot detector, only 30 kilograms, which we took in 2018, which already led, led to a first application, where we observed, unfortunately, with 3 sigma, but with 2.5, uh, 2.7 sigma, our first um, uh, um, neutrino candidate event coming from a collider. Okay, now the installation. This is how it looked in 2019, essentially, when I gave the talk uh, in Freiburg. In 2019, so this is a tunnel where, the, so in this direction is, is, is Atlas. So then the first thing which had to have be done is actually you had to um, curve out the tunnel a bit because um, well, we are looking, well, the Atlas detected a little bit downwards, right? That's what, what, what's done here. And then we put here the, um, uh, the support structure as well as the magnet. The port structure actually was built here in Mainz, and we were driving this with a car uh, to, to um, turn. And then uh, finally, um, uh, end of last year, we had the full detector set up. That's actually how it looks like. So we have here the video stations, here the decay volumes, here the tracking stations, here the pre shower detector, here the color meter, and here in front, actually, the picture of the uh, phase and experiment. So, just a brief uh, words on the testing measurements. So in 2021, so last year, we did um, testing measurements of all the individual components, in particular the tracking component, as well as uh, the color meters, just to double check if the um, um, performance measures, which we got from Atlas and LHCB, uh, are actually um, uh, uh, still correct. And what you see here actually looks perfectly as we expect. And the paper there is currently under preparation. Now, finally, the first data. So you know the LHC run three, uh, the LHC uh, run three has been started a few weeks ago, and what we see here is actually our first, uh, one of the first um, muon events which goes through our detector. So you see here the top view, here the side view, and as expected, a straight line. But that's obviously just the starting point of, of everything. Um, one thing which I find rather interesting because it's important for us is that we're currently running a mock data challenge. So what's that? The idea is there that we use um, pseudo data, so we have a full simulation, obviously, of everything. We put some um, signal inside, so only one person knows where the signal is, and the others have to try, well, the others have to, to see if they can actually reconstruct the signal to be sure that in the end our complete analysis chain is working. So um, this is coming, coming now to an end, and so we are obviously starting now to look at the real data. Um, my last two minutes I would like to spend on, obviously, <laughs> Uh, first upgrade of the experiment, and let's come back to the, uh, the problem of the two photons. So the thing is, we can, when, the photo, when the axion decays in two photons, we have no way to separate in the calorimeter if it's a two-photon event or one-photon event, right? So it would be extremely useful to have a pre-shower detector where you can actually start to separate um, uh, these, two, um, uh, these two signatures. And we have two designs here. The first one is based on the scintillator approach. So there we have a, 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 sorry, a pixel approach, a pixel detector, where you put a rather large pixel detector in front of the um, calorimeter, interleaved with some tungsten. And then, obviously, the photons start to shower. And we can, if you have a very good resolution, you can distinguish one photon signatures from two photon signatures. And this is now approved by, uh, by CERN and will be installed um, uh, next year or, or in 2024. Would be cool if we have signatures by then, then we can actually confirm that we have seen uh, an axiom. Another uh, approach which we also implemented, and this was developed here in mind, that's why, I, that's why I show it, is not based on pixels, but on micromega detectors. There, the resolution is not quite as good, however, it's sometimes cheaper. Yeah? So if we wouldn't have not got the funding for this one, uh, we would have gone for this one because it's cheaper, uh, much. And, but on the other hand, obviously, the resolution is not as good. The basic idea, however, is the same. So you have tungsten. Interleaved now not with pixels but with micromega detectors, which is uh, the cheap part. And then you can actually see the improvement in sensitivity. So you see, um, so the, uh, depending now on the uh, number of uh, events which we uh, expect, the number of background events which we expect, you see actually there's a significant improvement from here to here, with or without the pre shower detector. And this brings me already to the end of the talk. I guess um, I, I will not um, uh, repeat what I just said, I think this is clear. Let me just start with this picture here. That's me in the LHC tunnel. And I was working at the LHC since 2004. I was never able to come to the tunnel until the installation of phaser. That was, this, was why, uh, this was my highlight in 2020 uh, when, when we did the installation. And now, obviously, the data taking is ongoing. And we are looking very much forward to get our first results. And I hope I stand here in three years and present you a very clear sign signature of actions.
Very exciting. Uh, they're both very exciting. Uh, they're very exciting. 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 Now there's one company left, and actually they're exactly scanned with a, with a, with a computer scanner, and actually it's different focal planes. So you send there the films, they, you develop the films. It's actually not so trivial to do, yeah, because even when you send the films to Japan, by a plane, for example, possibly Grace will still hit it, right? Um, so, um, but then you get there, and then it gets developed, and then scanned, yes. You can digitize Yes, 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 yes. Is analysis automatic, or somebody looks at that? Sorry? Is analysis then automatic, or somebody looks at that? Uh, well, it's, it's custom, custom mice. It's done obviously automatic. Yeah? There will be not hundreds of people looking at the pictures, <laughs> um, but the reconstruction is done in an automatic way. Yeah, so check. Like yeah. <laughs> um, so on slide five, you showed uh, uh, some parameter space, and you mentioned that there's some theories uh, that, that may explain the early mice. Did you see? Yeah, it's actually, I can forward you later the paper by Matthias Neubert, so the guy who gave the, is he here now, or is he left? So he has written a paper, I think in 2018 or so, um, where he where proposed several uh, several methods, uh, sorry, several models, which could explain the G minus two. Not only in this parameter space, but also uh, the idea of this paper actually was Higgs going to axion axion and looking for this, but in principle, the same parameter space actually uh, is, is covered by this phaser model. So if you look for Axions, LHC, and Neubert, you will find this paper. It's essentially on Inspire, the first one that you see. Any question? So I have a question for myself. There is a event applied in the event applied with two photons, right? Yes. So how much is the red of the motion? Sorry? How much is the red of the motion? The rain. Ah, so this, is, uh, this depends on the coupling which you have here. So it's a pure coupling thing. So that's why... Um, so actually, we are limited. The matrix the, the, the we are, which come here, are come, coming from several points. First of all, obviously, by the location of phaser. The more you put phaser downwards, um, the, the uh, smaller the coupling would be. If you put it larger, the coupling would move upwards. Also, just interesting, the only reason why we come here to this parameter space is clearly because there was already a tunnel built by pure chance, which was pointing towards Atlas. If there would be no tunnel built in the LHC, which was a port tunnel, it wouldn't be there, the experiment wouldn't be there. It was just a pure chance that there was space. Thank you very much.